This episode of Let's Play Pretend is sponsored by Dubby Energy. Dubby Energy is a mix-at-home energy drink produced in the USA that is formulated to give you focus and energy with no jitters or crash. With no calories, no sugar, no fillers, and no artificial colors, Dubby is a go-to choice for your energy needs. With our code LPPPOD, you can get 10% off of any purchase that you make on their website. And yes, I mean any purchase. You want to make 15 purchases a month? Have 10% off of each one of them. Dubby Energy, an energy drink that you mix at home. No jitters, no crash. Let's Play Pretend is an explicit podcast with subject matter that may be disturbing to some listeners. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Yeah, and Cody's laughing, so it's good. Let's Play Pretend! Let's Play Pretend! Let's Play Pretend! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Pretend. I am Jordan Derringer. I am your DM, GM, keeper, handler, and host. And I have with me, as always, Mr. Nick Barnett. Ned Dollaran. He's the man with no plan, and he's hanging with his older version of uh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like that. I really like that. You're welcome. Oh, man, that put a smile on my face. All right, what have you got to contribute, Breck? <laughs> Mr. Breck Black, uh, sorry. <laughs> Ryan Winchester, and uh, Ryan can't rhyme or rap, so uh, I'm just going to leave that there. That works for me. <laughs> I'm still in awe of uh, Ned's rhymes. Yeah, that was good. I, I mean, <laughs> I got to say, that was really good. Do you have anything that you can add to it, Mr. Matt Check? Arthur Gooseberg, get up here to say, I really don't want to die in a horrible way. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. All right, come on. Let's keep the ball rolling, Mrs. Melanie Derringer. I play Samantha Williams, and I can't fucking rap either, so I'm just going to sit over with Breck and just (laughs) listen and watch. (laughs) That's fair. We can be the producers. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man, that was a good way to start an episode. That was fun. I like that. All right. Who's ready for a recap? Uh, yeah, I don't remember anything from last fucking week or whenever we recorded. Yeah, last, we need so. a look. I just remember there's an older me with my face and my voice. Yeah, it's, it's been a couple weeks. So let's do this. You guys headed towards Samantha's house, ended up falling into a net trap. A, like a net from underneath you pulled you up into a tree. An older version of Samantha riding Anubis came by and said, well, Anubis, look what we got here. You guys instantly clocked that it was Samantha, older Samantha, by about maybe five years or so, as she confirmed later with a big scar on the left side of her face going from the corner of her mouth up to about her ear. Don't know how she got it. Don't know where she got it. You haven't asked her. She hasn't told you. After she reached through and felt Ned's forget-me-not, she instantly, like you guys saw her eyes go wide and she cut you guys down. You started talking and she goes, you know, let's go back to the barn. We're safe out here, but better safe than sorry. So you guys headed back to the barn. You were talking, kind of figuring out where things laid with this, like what she went through, what you guys are going through, what's different. She told you guys that she ended up doing a ritual. They were they were originally going to redo Ashley's ritual and ended up going a different route. And the ritual that they did, someone had to stay behind, which is where she is. After she 
dis, uh, discussed the ritual with you guys, she seemed very interested in that magic tooth that you guys had with you. And as you guys were deciding that you wanted to go to Ashley's house to see if her and Chris were there, you got a text message, all of you, from your normal group chat with Ashley in it from a brand new number that said, I wouldn't go there if I were you. And that's where we are now. So what would you guys like to do? I want to call that number. Go straight to voicemail. Nope. Oh, wow. Shocking. Are you actually calling the number? Uh, yeah, I'm going to put on speak. Okay. Ring, ring. Okay. Ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> Banana phone. <laughs> it rings seven, eight times. Holy shit, do they not have a voicemail set up? (laughs) And then instantly disconnects. You don't get a chance for voicemail or anything. Ryan Uh, is going to pull... Ryan is going to pull out his phone and just send a uh, middle finger finger emoji to the (laughs) random number. (laughs) It's always a good jumping off point. Ned is looking at his phone and sees that come through. (laughs) Hey, Ryan, I think we were on the same page. We all agree that's probably, like, evil Chris, right? Honestly, at this point, I don't care. Because if they're not in this group here, or a select few of, like, I don't know, two or three people, I don't care what they say. Sam just texts, who is this? New phone, who dis? It's also weird (laughs) that they won't answer. (laughs) A phone call right after they send a goddamn text message. <laughs> Ghost. They're ghosting. You guys don't get a response to the text message. I'm going to send a da fuck emoji. No, sorry. Mm-hmm. A gif. Okay, there's, I was going to say you're no going to have to send me gif. that emoji. There's no emoji. <laughs> I can only send like, I'm going to send like a, a Garfield emoji or a gif that's like da fuck. Okay. Because everyone has a relatable Garfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mine's the one where he plops into bed. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> I was making a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get a text back. It's another Garfield gif. Oh, no. It's like, <laughs> it's like this guy doesn't quite understand the assignment or girl. It's like they don't quite understand the assignment because it's just a gif of Garfield shrugging that says, Mondays, right? <laughs> Wait, do like we for real get that back or are you just fucking yes. with us? No, yeah, you get that back. Now I'm looking at my phone to search Garfield gifts to actually get a give a response. <laughs> Ned's going to look uh, up to older Sam. Hey, do you still have your phone? Um, Yeah. I do. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out her phone. The same one from when you got transferred in here? Yes. Does your phone still work? Did you get that message? Because you two ought to have the same number then. I didn't feel my phone go off. She opens her phone and there is not a message to her. Wait, you're uh, saying your phone number is not 555-1234? <laughs> Really? Oh, no. Mine's, <laughs> mine's 555-4321. Five, 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 oh. He's boxing some people. <laughs> Got it. I'm, I'm going to call her phone real quick. My phone or her phone? Her phone, not your phone. I got your phone. <laughs> How are you going to call her phone? I have my phone. She just said her phone number is 555-4321. Five, 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 oh, <laughs> I was going <laughs> to I thought we were doing a bit, but okay. <laughs> no, no bit. I'm legitimately calling her phone just because I want to see if it still works. Okay, her phone rings. I, I hit hang up before she can answer. I don't need another incident like with Arthur. You weren't there, but I promise you I don't want to do it again. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> all right. One of y'all want to add her to the group chat? You know I'm not good at doing that whole group chat thing. I guess Sam puts we'll do Sam's number into the into the chat. It's really weird. I don't like typing my phone number backwards. <laughs> But then Sam just puts her phone away and just kind of stares at everyone and goes, regardless, we got to go that way anyways. I don't know who this person is or if they're just trying to scare us out of there, but I think we should head that way. 
I don't think we have any other choices, do we? Well, I mean, we could just not go to Ashley's house, but it's really weird that they said that right as we mentioned going there when we didn't really plan on it. So how did they know? We're being watched. Bum, bum, bum. Fuck. It, it don't really matter what we do or where we go. All we know is if they don't want us to go there, then that means there must be something there they don't want us to see. We need to book it. That's what I'm saying. We need to head to Ashley's house because apparently there's something there that we're missing. All right. Maybe it'll be you. our way to get home. Hey, uh, older Sam, where did you meet the man in the suit? I was uh, just out on a supply run in the town. Kind of close to the nest, but not not close enough to be dangerous. That was the first place I met him. After that, he always kind of seemed to just show up. Just show up? Mm-hmm. Okay, could he be the one who's telling us not to go there? Well, he never texted us or called us, and I saw him die. What? Yeah, I told you that before. I'm going to be honest with you, older Sam. The whole dying thing, that's really relative here. Because we all watched Ashley die, and she's still around, I believe. That's fair. That's 100% fair. And uh, according to you two, and he points at both Sams, you saw Chris die from his point of view, and he's still around, so... He's got a point. So, like uh, he's going to fucking answer. <laughs> <laughs> Nick... <laughs> You need to say that so that way the listeners can hear you, can hear what you're doing. I didn't want to interrupt the conversation. I'm just letting you know what's going to happen later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, let's antagonize the evil entity. <laughs> Why don't we? That's a surprise tool for later. <laughs> <clears throat> Guys, we have a really weird energy <laughs> I'm liking this energy tonight. I hope we run into Evil Chris because he don't want to deal with this shit. Oh, no. <laughs> this I know is, him. This is a gas leak episode. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I haven't slept well in like a week, so I'm running on very little sleep. Hey, Same. I haven't slept well in like seven months, so I get it. <laughs> is this the sleep deprived episode? <laughs> Welcome to Sleep Deprivation. I'm adding it to the footnotes for a title. <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to call this one Slap Happy. I'm also drinking. That's not helping. Disagree. That always helps. <sighs> All right. So while everyone's having their conversation, Ned is going to send a message to the group chat to that new number. And I'm just going to say, Evil Chris, I assume? Question mark. And then... After like five seconds after that, I'm going to send a GIF image from Pulp Fiction that says, does he look like a bitch? And it's Samuel L. Jackson with the afro. <laughs> the best Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> you get a uh, Pulp Fiction GIF back and it's John Travolta with the coat over his arm looking around like, where the fuck is it? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Y'all, that's got to be evil Chris. I don't see how that could be anyone else. I think we need to beat feet. We need to get there quick. Everybody got your, like, pocket knives and flashlights and all your weird little trinkets and shit? Oh, yeah, I'm trinket it up. I can't remember. Did As you're about to put your phone away, you see another text come in from this number. It says, I go by many names, but Evil Chris is not one of them. Sam texts back and says, are you the man in the suit? I own suits, yes. You're no fucking help. If you are asking if I am currently in a suit, the answer would be no. Are you in your birthday suit? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> you just get the devil horns emoji. Like the devil smile. Okay, well, if he's naked, I'm not going. Oh, yeah, nobody right. wants to fight somebody naked. Nope. He can have Ashley at that point. I don't know about that now. I started walking towards Ashley's house at a rapid pace. <laughs> there ain't going to be no make, naked man near my girlfriend. <laughs> uh, Brian is going to run up and grab Ned's shoulder and just be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know we need to go there. But this also may be a trap. 
So let's not just run straight in? It's not any worse than running towards the door of a movie theater. Right, Sam? We're not going to talk about that. All right. Um, See, Sam agrees with me. (laughs) As they're talking, Sam will text the number back saying... Oh, fuck. What was I going to have her say? I got distracted. Hold on. It's there. Nope, it's gone. No, yes. Um, (laughs) She's going to text it back (laughs) saying... Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pregnancy brain really does suck. Okay, guys, I literally had this whole thing planned out, and then it just went. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, retake that one without me laughing over you. Go ahead. <sighs> Sam is gonna pull out her phone or text the number back as they're talking, and ask, "Are you here to help us or harm us?" Everybody, roll me an alertness check. Ooh, first roll of the night. Dang. That is a 24 on a 26. A 49 on a 67. A 55 on a 40. 29 out of a 68. As usual, <laughs> Arthur doesn't fucking notice anything. <laughs> I'm reading my book. But the rest of you notice that when Samantha sends that text... All of a sudden, from the other side of the barn, you can hear a... What? Well, we'll surely never know where that person is. Ryan immediately levels his spear at the other end of the barn. As you level your spear at the other end of the barn, you see... Crouched down on top of one of these stall posts, this humanoid looking creature I don't like how you're saying that well I mean it looks like a human but it's completely gray it's got long limbs it has this face that the best way I can describe it is his eyes are wide but very sunken back into his head he, he looks very gaunt if that makes sense it's Smeagol get him <laughs> And he looks at you, and his head's kind of cocked. And he he looks at you, and he goes, Helping is a relative term, don't you think so? Sweet Jesus. I don't like you. I don't like you. That's not Sam. That's (laughs) Melanie. I don't like you. So, um, God? (laughs) Yes. Does this uh, trigger my dysmorphobia? Oh, I forgot you had that. Yes, it does. What is that? It's the phobia yeah, I got from uh, hitting my breaking point like uh, last session. Basically, he has a phobia of things that look humanoid but are not human. Are oh, not human. Oh, no. So, Arthur. Fight, uh-huh. flight. Or faint. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, I'm gonna run. You're gonna run, and then what? Um, actually, how far away is it from me? It's on the other side of the barn. You guys are probably 40, 50 feet away from it. My barn is pretty big. It's fight, flight, or faint. You're gonna roll a d6. Yeah. So you need to give me the order of what m- most likely to least likely what Arthur would do. I would probably flight, faint, and fight. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to roll a d6. Okay. One, two, or three, you're going to run away. Four or five, you're going to pass out. Six, you're going to charge it and try to attack. (laughs) Don't be like Sam. Two. Two. So... As you lay eyes on this thing and it starts to talk, something in your brain just goes, nope, and you turn around and beat feet. Arthur doesn't say a word. His eyes just get fucking, like, massive and just runs. Okay. 
Hey, Matt. Yeah? Go ahead and remove your headphones for me, please. Oh, Lordy. You got it. Oh, merciful Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word for it. Okay, so you guys see Arthur just fucking hauls ass out of there. And the creature goes, What's wrong with your friend? Um, I don't know. Maybe you scared the shit out of him like you almost did the rest of us? <laughs> no. I'm not no, that thanks. scary, am I? Uh, have you looked in a mirror lately? You see before you can say anything else. He puts his hands down on the post in front of him and does like a very graceful front flip off and lands in a crouch position in front of you guys. How tall is this thing? You haven't seen him standing straight up yet. But does he look little or does he look like normal human size? Oh, he looks... You get the idea that if he stood at full height, he's taller than you guys by a couple feet. What I'm picturing is like sun and moon from security breach like that tall yeah that's fair just a little bit taller than average human height yeah Ryan is gonna slowly pull up his spear so it's just kinda pointed up towards the ceiling and be like so where'd you get the cell phone oh I don't have a cell phone (laughs) that's primitive um but it, was it you texting us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was me. How? With my brain. Stop. You're lying. Your brain vibrated? Yeah. I like to make noise. Um, I'm going to look at older Sam to see what her reaction is. She is absolutely pale and not saying anything. She's just staring at this thing. So clearly she doesn't know what this thing is. Nope. Cool. Or she does know exactly what it is, and that's why she's so silent. That could also be. So why don't you want us to go to Ashley's house? It would not end well for you. Okay, but like, why? Because you don't want to get hurt now, do you? Not particularly. Then it wouldn't end well for you. Do you have a name? Like I told you, I go by many names. But Evil Chris isn't one of them. But what do you call yourself? I don't call myself anything. Well? Why would I call myself anything? Then I'm just going to call you nobody. Nobody works. It's a new one. <laughs> okay, okay, I can't. That laugh. <laughs> oh. So what's your angle there, bud? Yeah. Are you going to help us, or? From the crouch position, about 45 degrees. Uh, Ned's going to start walking just straight towards this thing. Ned, what are you doing? If he wanted to hurt us, he was going to hurt us already. I'm going to walk up and be like six inches away from this thing. As you start walking towards him, you see the smile fade from his face, and he stands up at full height. Oh, fuck. And he's a little bit taller than I may have let on. He's standing over you at about seven and a half feet. Sam's going to back the fuck up. Why shouldn't we go? You didn't answer that question. You just said, if you don't want to get hurt, that doesn't help anything. Why? What's there? Evil. And you're not? Like you said. If I wanted to hurt you, I would have done it already. Yeah, like the other things that already tried to kill us. I've already almost died three times in the last 12 hours. So the fact that we're having a conversation and not attacking each other should be good for you, right? (laughs) Ryan is going to come up behind Ned and clap a hand over his mouth and just be like, I apologize for him. He's having a bad day. Just give us a second, and he's going to drag Ned back. I'm going to resist that. Okay. Okay. 
So you guys know what to do. I'm going to need opposed strength checks. Strength, okay. Would oh. Ryan get advantage if I tried to help? Yes. Okay, so how does advantage work? Advantage works where Ryan can roll the 10 spot, so the um, the dice that has 10, 20, 30, 40, he can roll that one twice and take the lower of the two, or the higher of the two, whatever gives him the advantage. Okay. Since That's it's an opposed it. thing. Sam is gonna is gonna help Ryan. Okay. I got a 60 out of 70. No, oh, I rolled the same thing twice. I got a 67 out of 75. So he is able to pull you away, Ned. As uh, Ryan's pulling away, he's just like, Ned, I know you're upset, but shut the fuck up. You wanted to leave the goddamn movie theater. We saw how that played out. Maybe somebody else can yeah. take a lead for a quick second. Yeah, that's great, except don't antagonize the first thing and hasn't tried to kill us in two seconds. I didn't antagonize yeah. anything. Give me an alert check. I up to him. A what? what? I need all three of you to give me alertness. Ooh. Ah, fuck. Ooh, that didn't go good. Nope. <laughs> 61 on a 26. Okay. Uh, nat 8 on a 67. Uh, 92 on a 68. Ooh. <laughs> Oof. Okay. As you guys are talking... Ryan, you turn Ned around to have a conversation with him, and you glance over Ned's shoulder, and the creature's gone. And with that, I need you guys to take off your headset so I can check in with Sir Matt. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. Okay. So you hit your fight, flight, or faint, and you hauled ass. So what are you doing? I'm trying to find like a just a spot to hide. Okay. Maybe like, like a bush or maybe like a hollowed out tree. <laughs> okay. Something to hide in. Okay. So I would say let me see what skills we have here that I can make you do. Cuz I don't want to make you roll alertness. That's dumb. <laughs> what about, uh, why don't you roll me a survival? <coughs> oh, boy. Well, that's a, that's a fucking no. <laughs> 75 on a 10. <laughs> oh, you didn't put anything into survival. Okay, um. They should have. What else could I make you roll? Okay, so you're running. You failed that one. You're still going. Still going. Starting to breathe a little heavy. You've been running a while, so you start to slow. You turn around and glance over your shoulder. You still see the barn. Mm -hmm. But the barn is... It's pretty far away by now. You, <laughs> you hauled ass pretty hard. And you stop. And... What's running through your head right now? Uh, I gotta get away, gotta get away. But uh, as soon as I stop, I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, I'm alone. Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, I should probably get back to my friends. I'm gonna look around to my surroundings immediately. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta nut up or shut up. I kind of like smack myself in the face. Like, come on, Arthur. Get okay. your gooseberries in a fucking in a bunch and get back to your goddamn friends. I'm trying to hype myself back up. I'm not going to make you roll alertness for this because I want you to see it. <laughs> Why? You think I'm going to fail or something? What? Your phone goes off. You All get right. a text message. It's from that number. And it just says, oh, are we playing hide and seek? Oh, sweet Jesus. Arthur has a chill down his spine. Oh, my God. And I just say, fuck off. With a Garfield flipping him off, because that's obviously <laughs> a gift someone. I can come collect you if you'd like. Oh, sweet Jesus. 
after I read that, I'm going to start booking it back to the group. Okay. Like, I, I'd rather deal with the, the monster I know instead of the uh, unknown fucking voice that we're getting a message from. I might not run into the barn immediately, but I'm going to run back to where my friends are. They are still in the barn. Okay. I feel like I calm myself down for a millisecond, and then I got a goddamn text message that just <laughs> brought my anxiety to 200. So you're running back to the barn? Yeah. Um, full tilt. I'm fucking fully freaked, so I'm not really checking. I'm just fucking running. Okay. As you're running back to the barn, you hear from behind you. <laughs> oh, I my God. You. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hate this. I hate <laughs> this. And I hate you. And all of a sudden, there are arms wrapped around your torso. Arthur screams the loudest scream he's ever screamed. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to subject my apartment. That's fair. That's fair. Um, are you going to try to resist it or what? Oh, yes. Absolutely. I'm trying. I'm fighting for my life. Okay. I'm screaming, fighting, kicking, trying to squirm my way out of it. Before you're able to like try to physically resist it, we're going to try to mentally resist it. Oh, God. So I need you to roll me a contested power roll. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God, dude. These dice. I'm swapping them. 55 out of 50. Ooh. I know. And I rolled an ought one. Oh, shit. So you are limp and not able to move. Oh, God. And all of a sudden, you feel like your body is being tugged in a way <laughs> that you can't describe. Like, it's like in the pit of your chest. It feels like it's just being sucked through something and your vision gets all blurry. And it, it's like it's almost like someone knocked your glasses off and then put a very colorful kaleidoscope right in front of you, like all kinds of different colors and shapes moving around. You can't focus on anything. And then all of a sudden, I can't snap tonight, apparently. All of a sudden, you're back in the barn. Huh? You're facing your friends. What? And you feel the constriction around you let go, and you're able to move freely. What? And with that, I'm going to get everyone else back in. What the fuck? So, Ryan, last thing that you saw was you guys were talking and you looked over Ned's shoulder and the creature was gone. Yes. You guys are wondering where the hell did it go? And after about five seconds, you hear uh, as it pops back into existence in front of you, holding Arthur. Holding Arthur? Mm-hmm. Ah! And it has this big grin on its face. And really gently, very nicely, sets Arthur down, feet on the ground, lets go of him. And he goes, <laughs> we played hide and seek and I won. How far away did he place Arthur from us? Right in front of him. But he just, he came back into the same point he was at and just let Arthur go. Like he's not... You guys get the feeling that this thing really thought that him and Arthur were just playing a game and just brought him back like, ah, I got him. Okay. Arthur uh, frantically scurries back to his group and he's hiding behind them. Yes, yeah, Sam reaches out her arms and pulls Arthur over. It's shaking like a fucking chinchilla out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, still holding Ned, just says, can you teach me to teleport like that? <laughs> Absolutely not. Humans can't do that. You're mad I want to talk to it, but you're going to ask it to teach you shit? I'm sorry, would you like to fight Negacris without the ability to teleport or with the ability to teleport? Wow. All right. <laughs> well? Is this thing a child? You kind of get that feeling. 
Ryan turns to him and is like, how old are you? What, what is old? Uh, hmm. How many times has the planet gone around the sun since you've been alive? Ned looks at the sky that hasn't changed once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, excuse me. He knows how to tap into cell phones. I'm assuming he knows a little bit more than he's letting on. I don't. I don't know what the sun is. What's a sun? Uh, okay. Um. Never mind. Um. Sam looks over to older Sam as she's you know cradling the shaking chinchilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He goes, um, we need answers. What the fuck is that thing? Do you think I have answers? Yeah. I'm just as confused as you are. I've never seen this thing before in my life. I I don't believe you. You can roll a human on it if you want. Me? Yeah. Sure. That's not going to go very well, because... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Damn it. That was a 15 out of 11. You can burn four luck if you want. Sure, I haven't used any of my luck, so I'll burn four luck. Where okay. the hell is my luck? Where is my uh, luck? In the top section, I think. Where'd I have you guys put luck? The very bottom. Oh. Ah, there. Oh, yeah, I will definitely burn four luck. Okay. After burning four luck, you can tell she is being 100% honest with you. She has no clue what this thing is. Uh, Ryan just turns to her and says, Hey, buddy, uh, what are you? They call me a jumper. I mean, that makes sense. I'm still going to call you nobody. That's fine. I like having new names. We have to kill it. Kill it with a gun. Someone's got to have a gun, right? Come on. Sam just starts stroking Arthur's hair like, it's okay. (laughs) It's all right. How many people can you jump with at one time? I don't know. I've never tried. Do you want to play a little game? You want to try to do two people at once right now? I look over at Ryan like, just trust me. Ryan's just giving him a wide-eyed look of like, okay, um, where did this come from? We, we can try, but, uh, <laughs> can't blame me if it doesn't end well. Well, you brought, you brought Arthur back, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, and one is all I've ever tried it with. How far can you jump? It's gotta be a lot of fun. It is so much fun. It's, oh, it's so fun! It's like a fun game, yeah. Uh, real quick, before we might try something, are there any more of you? Other creatures like you? You see his face goes, like, from happy and joyous to straight face, and he goes, I don't talk about the others. They're mean. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. No, I, I don't want to make you upset. I want to be your friend. Right? Right, guys? We, we want to be his friend, right? Mm-hmm. Right. No! Thanks, thanks for bringing our buddy back. Our, Arthur got scared, and that's... It's okay. But thank you for bringing him back to us. Thank you very yeah. much. It was fun. I like fun. I'm going to look to Ryan, since he's, like, the one who's right next to me. Uh, man, if... If we can make friends with this thing, he might be able to move us around town a lot quicker. Ryan is going to slowly turn his head from looking at the creature to look at Ned and just go, I don't think he's going to want to be a taxi service. But, I mean... He's acting like a little kid, man. Like, I'm not even really that afraid of what I'm saying out loud because he didn't know what a name was till you called him nobody. Yeah... And the moment he gets bored, he's going to stop wanting to do something. So maybe don't force him to basically have a job? You asked him to be your mentor. Well, yeah. Teaching a human to teleport would probably be a lot more fun than just jumping between two spots because we need to, you know, I don't know, go to the bathroom or some shit. (laughs) 
how far can you go in one jump, man? Nobody? Sorry? That's, that's your name now, right? Nobody? Yes. Yeah, nobody. I like nobody. You can call me nobody. I can jump so far. That doesn't help. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I have an idea. Do you know that really crazy little... It looks like a little house and it's in a tree. Do you know where that's at? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I like that place. You do? That place is nice. Awesome. Can you... Just because I want to see how far you can really jump. Can you go there and bring us back one of the fire sticks that was there? We call it a candle. Ryan, did you take all the candles? He would have grabbed a couple of, or a bunch of them, but he went to take in every single one. You made it sound okay. like there was a lot. There, I mean, there was a lot, but I didn't know how many it took either. <laughs> Not all of them. That would be a hassle. Okay. Especially after we had a fight there. Okay. So he kind of cocks his head the other way and goes, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring back a fire stick. And then he's gone. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. I agree with Arthur. If you need to stand outside, stand outside. But this is the first thing that hasn't tried to kill us. The last time he stood outside, it just brought him back. Uh, Sam, you should take Arthur outside. I, I feel like we might be able to use this guy for some... I, I don't know. I, I agree with you guys. Last time one of us went outside, Arthur, he was instantly teleported back here. But he said he... But he also said he hasn't been able to transport more than one person. You no, know, he said he hasn't tried. And he did say it might not end well. Shut up, God. Um, I I appreciate the fact that you look at your older self as a god, but... <laughs> no, I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was you. <laughs> no. I forget that older Sam is here because she has my fucking face. Uh, look, I'm just saying, we're talking to this thing like it's a child. Maybe we can convince it like it's a child. I got your fire stick. No way. Hold on. Let me yeah. see that. Let me see that. And I put my hands out. He gives you a stick that is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't even have to go all the way to the little house to get this one. Wait, then where'd you go? I found a stick and lit it on fire. That wasn't hard. <laughs> this thing's naked, right? Yes. How did you light it on fire? Same way I sent you words on your little phones. With my brain. You can set things on fire with your mind? Uh-huh. I, I mean... He sent a text message through a digital system. I think setting something on fire is probably easier. <laughs> As you guys start talking, you see his arms are like behind his back, not like hiding anything, just like resting there. And he's just kind of using his head and swaying back and forth with a smile on his face like he's waiting for something like just da 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 da. Well, you gave me something. Here, hold on, hold on. I got something for you. Uh, 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 and I, I fidget through the, like, man purse that I got from Arthur's house. And I grab one of my two flashlights and I'm like, here you go. Check this thing out. Do you turn the flashlight on? Nope. I hand it to him and let him look at it. He slowly takes it from you. Hey, buddy, see that little black part on the top of it? Push that down. Just push that down into it. Going well. As as he takes it out of your hand, you feel his fingers like run across your hand as he picks it up. Salad fingers. And he is cold <laughs> to the touch. So cold to the touch. And he picks it up and he's looking at it. And he clicks the light. And he's looking down into the light. 
Oh, man, you shouldn't look right at it. Don't look right at it. That's not really good for your eyes. And as the light turns on, you see his skin start to burn. And he screeches out in pain as he chucks the flashlight back at you. After he's done screaming out, he goes, I gave you fire stick and you heard me? You... I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I couldn't have known. I couldn't have known. Sam is starting to, like, reach out and try and grab at Ned, uh, Ned's, I almost called you Nick. <laughs> I mean, you're right either I way. I know, I'm right either way, but I'm <laughs> meaning to go for Ned's arm, not Nick's arm. For Ned's arm to kind of, like, pull him back to get him away from the thing. I thought we were friends. And you gave me something to hurt me. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. I, I put my hands up in the air, still holding the fire stick. Hold on. I didn't know the flashlight could hurt you. Did you know that the fire stick could hurt me? Did you know that? I did not know that. Wait, hold on, watch, watch, just, 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 just please just watch. And I'm going to, like hold it close enough to my arm to where it starts to singe the hairs away so that he can see it's damaging the top of my arm. You see his eyes narrow as he studies a situation and for a second you think you won him over, but then he cocks his head to the other side and he goes, the difference is you asked for the fire stick. I, th I thought you'd like it. If we knew it was going to hurt you, we wouldn't have given it to you. We've never seen anything like you before, so we didn't know. <sighs> we haven't been here all this long, so we don't know a lot of things. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I missed my dice tower. 76 on a 50-50, he does not believe you. Sam, with Arthur in tow, kind of just starts to back away towards the barn, the open barn doors. His eyes instantly snap at you, and then... Where do you think you're going? <laughs> Nowhere. Hey, hey, nobody. If you want to leave, you can leave and never see us again. I mean, we literally can't jump like you do. Oh no. <laughs> I'll be watching. And again, we can't stop you, so if you want to go ahead, I'm sure it'll be interesting to watch us. Just, we're sorry. Go ahead and leave. He looks at you all, and in an instant, reaches out and grabs old Samantha by like the front of her shirt and pulls her in and just kind of studies her for a second. And then, still looking at her, wraps his arms around Sam and Arthur. Pulls Arthur, her two in. Does, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, Arthur is just not, his eyes are not focusing on him at all. Trying to keep his eyes away from nobody as best he can. Okay. He lets go of old Sam, and old Sam just stands in front of him. Seems like she's almost frozen in place. And lightning fast, he reaches out. And you guys see something impossible. But his arm extends. And in one big swipe, pulls Ryan and Ned into a tight hug on the other side. So all four of you are restrained. And he reaches out and clasps his hands together. And in doing so, pulls old Samantha in to this big embrace. You guys are all being held by him. Can I get my flashlight out, my other one? Your arms are pinned at your side. Even when he extended his arms out to grab uh, old Sam, I didn't have a quick second to try and reach down to grab it. No, because it was more like, at that point, it was just his forearm stretching. Oh, okay. Like, he still had you tighten his arms. Damn. And he looks down at you, Ned, 
and he goes, You wanted to try more than one, right? Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> Let's have some fun. I'm sorry, everybody. If you want me to trust you again, we're going to play a game. What are the rules to this game? Hold on tight. I was afraid of that. And you guys see... It feels like... Arthur, you already know this feeling intimately. It feels like something grabbed you by the chest and is pulling you through a pipe. Like, originating at your chest. Like, that's where you're being dragged by. And it's as if your vision is blurry and a very bright kaleidoscope showed up in front of your face. You see all these colors and all these shapes that are merging in and out of each other as you're being pulled by your chest. Not harmful, just that's where you feel the pressure from and all these colors and it feels like the pressure is just pulling in on you. And as you think you just can't take the pressure anymore, you guys are standing outside and you're standing in front of Ashley's house. And he lets go. Uh, Sam immediately drops to her knees and throws up. Likewise. Yeah, that's that's a fair response, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan just starts breathing heavy and just says, God, does that what Mario feels like every time he goes through a pipe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Ryan is going to look for nobody to see if he's still there. He is, but he's kind of backed away a little bit now. Oh yeah, Arthur's keeping a wide berth. <laughs> is older Sam there? Yes, and she is. She has kept her composure and is just staring at him and very solemnly just nods as a sign of thank you. Ryan just says, I'm going to be honest, nobody. That was both terrifying and very impressive. That was kind of a fun game. I'm just... I'm happy I didn't leave parts of you behind. Parts of us behind? Yeah. I mean, the hole that I jumped through is only so big. <laughs> I could have very easily left someone's legs back at the barn, but I didn't. <laughs> Yay! We appreciate that. You are very talented. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you wanted to be, correct? Um, kinda. We were still deciding. Well, decision made. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Um, do you eat? Yes. Yes, I do. I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> Ryan is going to pull out a bag of jerky from Cryptic Crafts, the uh, Sasquatch jerky, and hold it out to him and be like, there's dried meat in here. I don't know if that's something you like. I love meat. And he reaches out and takes the bag from you, and you also feel as his fingers run across your hand to pick up the bag just how cold and clammy his skin is. Uh, Ryan resists with all his might to not violently flinch at that feeling. That's fair. That is fair. Um, if you ever want more, nobody, you can always pop in and ask for some. I can't promise to have some forever, but I can try. We'll see how good it is first. Eh, that's fair. You guys do what you have to do here. I will be on my way. Wait, how... How do we get in contact with you again? With your phone. Oh, right. I told you I can hear it with my mind. Yes, that's right. 
Are you the reason why people don't answer their calls? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't interfere at all. Oh. Damn. I was hoping you were going to say yes. <sighs> and I continue to vomit. <laughs> at this point, older Samantha turns around and is facing Ashley's house. Is she like in like a stoic trance or something? Or is she just... She's very stone-faced, yes. Well... We're going to figure out what we're going to do with nobody. So, uh, enjoy the meat if you like it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Okay, um, what the fuck? <laughs> we should definitely not talk to that thing again. Um, Arthur? You literally have a book on these things. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Well, there's a difference between having a book and being kidnapped by one. It's a little different. Um, as they're talking, Sam is going to get up and walk over to older Sam. Okay. And kind of see if she's... Like, I know she's sitting, like, a, like she's very stoic, but she's going to kind of walk over to her and kind of like tap her on the shoulder and see if like she's in some sort of trance or something like that. As you tap her on the shoulder she uh, kind of snaps out of like it, it was almost like she was staring off into space and she just looks down at you and is like oh um hi uh sorry I um I haven't been here since they left sure you're okay? No, no I'm not. Um, Because you're kind of freaking me out. You know as well as I do my feelings towards Ashley and Chris. Yeah? Being here is kind of hard. Well, clearly. But, uh, again, you're, you're kind of freaking me out a little bit. I feel like you're knowing, you know something more than you're letting out. No, no, I don't know. But now that they're gone, I'm just afraid of what we're going to find here. Sam kind of nod a little bit and look towards Ashley's house. And while everybody's still kind of talking, she just decides to walk towards the door to see if it's unlocked. Okay. Does Ryan notice this? Yeah. I mean, they weren't talking like privately or anything. Great. Uh, Ryan spins around and points at uh, Sam and goes, don't you fucking touch that door. <laughs> <laughs> what does Sam have a, uh, something like you know a habit of getting into trouble or something like that what, what are you trying to say Ryan <laughs> I'm saying we were told not to go here otherwise we'd get hurt so walking into the place just through the front door probably not the best idea well I just wanted to see if it was locked the last time you said that you attacked a door <laughs> <laughs> The last time she said that, she got choked out by a demon. I mean, you're not wrong. Now that I think about it, Samantha does not have a good track record with doors, does she? No. <laughs> no. She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you're the one who said it way back when. We don't split up. I wasn't going to split up. I just... I wanted to see if the door was unlocked. I... I'm Splitting up ten feet got you in a chokehold. I don't want that to happen again. We don't have that weird creature thing we almost killed that tried to end up defending us. Splitting up fifteen got uh, Arthur kidnapped. Then get your asses over here so we can go through the damn door. Brian just says, uh, maybe we should maybe glance through a couple of windows, maybe, you know, bang on the walls to see if anything comes to try to kill us so we can run away outside rather than inside. At that, old Samantha walks past and puts her hand on young Samantha's shoulder. And she goes, my friends are gone. They're back home. I'm here alone. Let me go through first. If anything happens to me, it's not splitting up your group. Gonna be totally honest with you, Samantha, older Sam, whatever we're gonna call you. Uh, fuck that. I say let it go Doesn't. through. Damn it, Sam, we'll get you a horse, okay? <laughs> wow. 
Do I still have the fire stick? <laughs> no. Damn it. Damn, he did leave something behind. Nope, that got left behind in the jump. Yep. Older Samantha just kind of smiles at you and puts her hand on the doorknob. Hold on. Side note. If Nick dropped the fucking fire stick in the barn, the barn's on fucking fire now. Not necessarily. I look over. Do I see smoke? (laughs) I don't think you can see the barn from Ashley's house. Look at the map. We weren't that far. Okay, how about this? It came with you, but when you dropped it here, it went out because of the dew on the grass. Sure. Just don't set my barn on fire. (laughs) That was a very confident retcon. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. So you have a stick, but no fire. Look, I, I, look, guys, before we go in, before we go in, both, both Sams, if anything else, that nobody creature is probably the most honest thing we've seen. I don't think he knows how to tell a lie, nor cares to lie to somebody. He said it was going to be dangerous here. I believe it. How do we know he wasn't just messing with us like everything else has in this realm? Because he didn't. Everything he did was with point. And because he doesn't have to. He could do what he wants. He doesn't have to lie. I guess. And Sam kind of takes a step back from the door. Ryan is going to walk up and try to pull older Sam away from the door. Oh, she is so pushing you back. I'm with Ryan. You guys are going to try and... Uh, Pull her away, huh? Oh, yeah. We're going in first. Okay. Um, Can I try and persuade her instead of it being a contest? Hey, you can try and persuade her. Sam. Look. Let us go in first. You even got got a flashlight on you? You got anything to where you can look around or see? Yeah. I don't leave home without it. Get out of the way. I'll roll that my was disadvantage. Some persuasion, <laughs> then. <laughs> Get out of the way. Yeah. I got a 65 on a 50. Yeah, she just kind of puts her hand on your chest and goes, Like I said, if anything happens to me, at least I'm not splitting up your group. And she just lightly pushes you back. Ryan is going to grab the arm she used to push Ned back and just yank her off the porch. Okay. Uh, She is going to try to not get grabbed, so I'm going to have you roll. Do you want unarmed combat or dex or? You can roll your dex versus her dodge. Her dodge was a 35 out of 40. That was a 12 out of a 50. All right. So she's able to just kind of move out of the way. And as she does, she grins at you guys and she opens the door. And nothing happens. See, I told you I would have been fine. And how many times have we opened something, nothing happened, and then two seconds later, someone's getting hurt? Yeah, pretty much. We, uh... He didn't say where we were going to get hurt in here. He just said that we were going to get hurt here. Ryan is going to walk up and just push Older Sam to the side, not off the porch, and just take and slam the door closed and open a couple of times, and then just wait and hear if he hears anything. She she crosses her arms and looks at you like, is this really what we're doing? (laughs) I don't think that was any smarter of an idea either. Again running outside in the open is much easier than trying to run away from something in a confined house. It depends on what you're running from. (laughs) Shush, God. (laughs) I would rather run from a fucking cheetah in my house than outside. I would not. My house is tiny. Yeah, Yeah, but there's more twists and turns to lose it in. It gets fast when it's going straight. I'm, I'm sorry, a couple hundred pound cat making two turns, I don't think I'm outrunning it. 
Anyways, does anything show up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing happens. No cheetah? A bobcat! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. And Samantha steps inside and closes the door behind her. What? what? No. Ryan immediately puts his foot in the way when she tries to close it. Sam, why do you have a death wish? God. Both of you. I don't know. <laughs> are, we, are we doing this again, Brick? <laughs> yes. Okay. There's Roll a reason, and foot. I know you. And I know you know the reason. Okay. Uh, roll your dex versus her unarmed combat this time. Because she's trying to slam the door faster than you can put your foot in there. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? Uh, straight hundred. <laughs> Oof. So she got a 72 on a 70. So she also failed, but since you crit failed, that makes hers a success. Because she failed less than you. <laughs> yep. Or I will let you decide this one. You can either take it as a you failed and she succeeded and is able to close the door behind her, or you are able to get your foot in there, but you're going to take a d4 of damage. Move your fucking foot. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, she can get the door closed. Okay. She gets the door closed. And you guys wait and wait. Maybe a minute. And the door opens again. And she goes, oh, Nothing happened here, so I guess we're good to go in. Arthur strays in. Ryan is going to look at young Sam as we go in and be like, you're not allowed to get this stubborn. <laughs> I already am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is nothing new for you. <laughs> I turn on my flashlight. Okay. Sam will grab hers and do the same. And then she'll walk inside. Okay. I also turn my flashlight on. Ryan will light a candle and go in. Give no. me your candles. Hey, that stick is still probably warm. Yeah, but I don't know how long that's going to last. What, a minute or two before I burn my hand? Candle. And besides, if nobody wants to pop in, I don't want to hurt him. Fuck no that. <laughs> hey, you all had a problem with him. I thought he was pretty okay. He just wanted to play games. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You guys all get a text in your group chat. And it's nobody's number just sending a thumbs up emoji. Stop listening to us, you creep. That's some horse shit. I'm the one who liked him first. <laughs> no, you wanted to use him as a taxi service. Like, don't don't try to spin that. You're the one who pulled me away and covered my mouth, sweetheart. Calm down. You ain't twisting this your way neither. Cause you got in the face of a child. Has that ever worked before? Boys. I'm gonna push past Ryan and go in the house and start looking around with the flashlight. And that's a sign that I won the argument. And now I'm going to follow. <laughs> no, it's a sign. I don't like to play stupid games to win stupid prizes. You're just jealous I have a new friend. <laughs> Ned <laughs> scurries away from that one. He did like the tall Smeagol. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, Ryan is just going to make a beeline for Ashley's room. Keep it in here out to here for you. See if he hears anything. Okay. So you guys, Ryan, you go up to Ashley's room. Is anyone else going with Ryan? Yeah, uh, I go. That's where I was heading to. Sam was going to Chris's room. Sam is going to Chris's room, so we're going to have a party split here. Okay. Are both so. Sam's going to Chris's room? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Both Sams can go to Chris's room. So, here's what I'm going to say. I am going to resolve Ryan and Ned and Arthur first in Ashley's room. All right, so go ahead and take off your headset. You guys are heading to Ashley's room. 
and you see both Samanthas just kind of look at each other and stop at Chris's room. And you guys keep going. And as you... Ryan, you were kind of leading the group here. You reach down and... She's got one of those handles. It's not like a knob. It's like an actual handle. So as you push down on the handle, you hear the latch open. And the door glides in nice and smooth. Nothing, no squeaking, no nothing. And at a quick glance, you guys don't notice anything like out of the ordinary. Ashley's house is also... You know, one of them that, one of the places that doesn't look decrepit. And it looks basically the same way you guys remember it. It's It's got her bed, it's got her desk. You, I will say on her bed, you see what Samantha saw in the real world. You see the list. And this is the updated list of the ingredients that she needed to do this ritual. So I will let you guys ask questions or do what you have to do here. I'm going to grab the list. Okay. Compare it to her old list. So uh, the old list is the one that you guys found when she had first started Researching. That's the word I'm looking for. When she first started researching how to contact the dead. This list that you find on her bed matches the one that you guys found at the treehouse that she actually used for the ritual. Let's see. Hmm. Is the light on in the bedroom? No. Uh, I'm going to try hitting the light switch and see if it turns the light on. Yep. The light turns on. The overhead light turns on. Ryan is going to start digging under Ashley's bed for her stash of alcohol she has under there that he would know about. Yeah, God, he would know about this. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide if Ashley would actually have that or not. I mean, she's the one that was throwing parties, so I just made an assumption. <laughs> that is a good point. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Go ahead, reach under there. Let's see what happens. I was just about to say, the way you said reach under there makes me want to nod, but I've already committed. So you put your hand under there, you're reaching for a bottle, trying to find something, and your hand bumps up against a bottle. Uh, Ryan is going to grab it and pull it out. It's the only bottle you were able to find. And you pull it out, expecting it to be her favorite rum. And instead, in the bottle, you see a red liquid. Oh. Ryan just stares at it for a second and then just kind of glances over to see if there's a label or anything. It still has the label of the alcohol that used to be in it. Does it look like the seal on the top is broken? Yes. Ryan is going to pop it open and take a small sniff. Okay. Does What does he smell? It's weird. It smells sweet. Is it full enough for Ryan to, like, dip the tip of his finger into? No, it's about half full. Ryan just kind of stares at it before closing it and just just kind of keeps staring at and goes, uh, Hey guys, you have any idea what this red liquid might be in this bottle? Because I'd rather take guesses before trying to drink any. Because it's definitely not rum. Can I roll for it? Yeah, go ahead. What should I roll? Roll. Would this be like some sort of ritual thing? Like an occult thing? Uh, you can roll a cult to see if it is. Otherwise, you can just roll a general intelligence check. Intelligence. Other intelligence. 33 out of 70 intelligence. Ooh. 13 out of 60 intelligence. Okay. 
So, Arthur, you take the bottle and open it, and you also give it a sniff, and that sweet smell, you can almost place it. Not quite yet. The smell is very familiar. And Ned, as you look at it and that scent hits your nose, you know exactly what it is. She was trying to make her own wine. Ah. Oh, God. Man, I really thought that was going to be blood in there for a minute. What? No. It's not thick enough to be blood. I mean, I totally didn't think that when I saw it. No. <laughs> I just smirk at him. All right. Shut up. You attacked a door. <laughs> He's right. You pretended like you took my friend. And I give. I push the bottle back into his chest and smile at him. I'm going to go and... Is her computer in the bedroom? It is, yes. It's a desktop. I'm going to go try and power on the computer. Okay. It powers on? No... No lock screen or nothing? I can just get in? I mean, it has a lock screen, yeah. I hit spacebar to unlock. Pops up with the password. Uh, Ryan, Arthur, either you know what this might be? Hmm. Uh, can I roll computer science? Yeah, you can roll computer science. Damn it, can I? I rolled a 60 out of 43. Yep, you don't know what the password could be. Uh, try Puma. It ain't Puma. She don't like those shoes. Uh, Jordan, I rolled a 31 out of 40 on a computer science. Do I get to pick a password? I'm trying to think here. No, I got it. I got it. Hold on. Oh, no, I know what her password is. Oh, no, I have a way around it. Oh, okay. Uh, Ned is going to scroll down to the bottom right, and I'm going to shut it down, and I'm going to restart the computer and boot it up into safe mode to bypass the lock screen. Uh, Okay. Yeah, with the 31 computer science, I'd say you know how to do that. So I, I do that. I smash the delete key to get into the BIOS and I boot it up that way alright I can't like get online or anything like that right here but we can at least look through the computer and see what I don't know what files she may have downloaded what she's got saved or typed up so I'm just going to go through like her desktop recent documents as he does this Ryan is going to start searching the rest of the room okay So what exactly are you looking for, Ned? Anything she may have taken a screenshot of or capture of, like, how she got ready for the ritual or anything pertaining to how it ended up getting us here. Okay. I will say this. The first thing you notice when when you boot up the computer is her background is the picture that you took at the party. I won't go back to that. That's the background that she has set on her computer. For what you're looking for, um, roll me a search. Search. That's the same as my computer science. 16 out of 40. Okay. So you're thinking to yourself, God, how can I, how can I find it? any of this stuff and you are able to go to the search bar and type in recents or recent and able to see what was used the most recently obviously you have your internet was used all that fun stuff but then a a word document pops up And you click on the Word document, and it's uh, basically like she was keeping an electronic diary. And a lot of it's all the same stuff that you would assume 
you know, after Chris died, she talked about how depressed she was and how she couldn't really think about living in this world without him. Her brother was her rock. Her brother was her best friend. All that kind of stuff. And there are a, uh, a couple entries that talk about things that, for you being in love with this woman, are kind of hard for you to read. I think once Ned starts seeing anything that would go in that kind of direction, he would close it and not read it. Okay. I'll, at once I get to that point, I'll just close everything out and hit the shutdown. All right, I, I couldn't find anything on there, man. Just some diary entries and stuff. There's nothing useful on the computer that I could see. Damn. Arthur's going to look around the room and see if there's anything else, like uh, maybe that looks a little out of the ordinary for her, her room. Okay. You and Ryan are both doing the same, so I'll have you both roll me a search check. Uh, Ryan is going to take it a step further. Rather than just looking, he's going to start, like, fully tossing the room. 48 out of 22. I don't see shit. (laughs) That sounds about like Arthur. Uh, 25 on a 42. Okay. I was going to say I was going to let you roll that advantage, but you don't need to. Yeah. Okay. So you're tossing the room. And what what exactly are you looking for? Um, having known Ashley a while, he knows her pretty well. Probably not as well as Sam, but he'd know if anything was out of place in her room. He'd been in there enough to notice if anything was odd or not supposed to be there. Okay, so you're just looking for generally out of place. Yeah, and anything that might be useful and to not die in the next 12 hours. Okay. I'm trying to think of what you can find. So you're tossing the room. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say instructions to get out. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. I know what you can find. Ooh. You are looking through the room and you're not really finding anything. You're you're tossing, you're flipping the mattress. You're, at this point, you are just desperate to find anything. And I mean, you've been going through her drawers, you've been going through her closet, you've been everywhere. There is a pair of jeans that is laying on the ground that you have moved around a couple times at this point. Like, you've been checking pockets, you've been doing everything. And you notice something that you didn't notice before, which you find kind of hard to believe with how many times you've moved that specific pair of pants. There is a piece of paper that's folded up in the back pocket. Ryan is going to grab and open the piece of paper. Okay. Grab and you open the piece of paper. And you see on the piece of paper, in handwriting that you don't recognize, five words. You see the words. Hang on, I'm pulling it up. Mm-hmm. Horn, finger, eye, tooth, and heart. And as you are looking at the, f- the piece of paper, in front of your eyes, you see a red line scratch through the word tooth. Only he sees that? I mean, you guys can all see it if you're looking at him. I am not. I rolled a bad search, so I don't think I am. Uh, as Ryan watches this, he slowly pulls out the tooth that he's holding. He looks up at Ned and Arthur and goes, I think I know what we need to do now. And I really hate that I'm going to say it. But I think we need to piss off Nega Chris and find all the rest of the things that belong to him. And he shows them the uh, piece of paper and says, the tooth just scratched itself out in front of my eyes. I don't like that, man. Not one bit. I don't either, because just finding this tooth and not knowing what it was, 
pissed off Nago Chris enough to pretty much do anything he wanted to try to kill us. I'm assuming going after the rest of these, not going to go any better. How are we supposed to defend ourselves if it gets worse? Well, if we can figure out what he is. I'm close. I'm sure we'll figure out the rest of it here soon. There's only a couple more options, right? Absolutely. There's only, I think I had him doubted to four. Yes, you had it down to four. We'll figure him out soon. I hope so. I'd like to research it more, but more, probably in a safer area. We don't really know if this is that safe. Yeah, we should uh, probably check on the girls. I think we have just about everything we need here. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's go get them. And with that, you guys can take your headsets off, and I'll get Melanie back in here. You are walking up with the whole group, and you and older Samantha just kind of glance at each other and both stop at Chris's room as everyone else goes to Ashley's room. The door is closed. Uh, Chris has, same as uh, Ashley, not a doorknob, but like a door handle. So Samantha looks at you and <laughs> she's like, do, do you want me to do the honors here too? Um, no, I'll, I'll do it. And she kind of like brushes Sam's hand away and puts it on the door handle. By all means. She takes a deep breath and then pushes it down and pushes the door open. Okay. You open the door and same thing I told them. Uh, same thing I told the boys. The the house is um, not decrepit. It's a normal house. It's normal. Okay. How many times have you been into Chris's room? We're not going to talk about that. Well, I mean, you guys didn't know you had a fling with each other, so... <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. Okay. Um, Sam has snuck into Chris's room multiple times. She may or may not have stolen a t-shirt or two. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> so you are very intimate with this room. Yes. And you and older Samantha kind of both have that look of recognition, that look of longing of just wishing for a simpler time and uh, as you step in you start looking around and nothing really seems out of place what uh, what is it that you're looking for any signs that Chris has been here or if he is here okay the room is empty and I'm guessing you've snuck into his room since he uh, was deployed? Yeah. The room looks exactly the same as you remember it being after he was deployed. Okay. Is there... So there's, like, no sign of anybody have, like, been living there at all? Nope. Okay. You just see the normal... You know, he was really excited to go into the military, so you see, like, the military posters. Um, you see his computer in the corner. He's got his TV with his Xbox with the latest version of Call of Duty there. Like, he was he was big into the whole military scene before he left. Well, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> because if there's no signs of... Anybody living there, there, she wouldn't keep snooping, I guess. No? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if she's stolen, like, t-shirts and stuff, I figured she'd want to take a t-shirt of his or something. I mean, she would probably do that. <laughs> 
So she will go over to his dresser and start rummaging through it to find a t-shirt to take with her. Okay. Older Sam is kind of looking over your shoulder as you do it. And she looks at the t-shirt that you pick and she's like, yeah, that's a good choice. That's a good one. I don't like the fact that you know his clothes like I do. I know you're me, but I don't like that you're me and it's (laughs) freaking me out. I think it's just something we have to come to terms with. Not gonna lie, there's part of me that still doesn't trust you. That's understandable. I don't know what to do to make you trust me. What, uh... What what can I say? What can I do? Um... Something only I would know. I don't know. I really don't. But... I got it. I got it. The day that we found Ashley in the treehouse, I was riding Anubis. And I was an idiot. I forgot to check the radar. And it started pouring on us. And of course, you know, we're stuck out in the middle of this ride with the rain pouring down. And my phone goes off, and it's our friends telling us that they can't find Ashley. So in the pouring rain, Anubis and I hauled ass over to her house to try to find her. And we went through her house and found her ritual list on the bed. That is something that only I was there for. I thought Arthur found the list. No. Arthur found the um, the list in the treehouse. Oh, this okay. was like, this was in the real world. This was like episode two, where you guys ended up going to the mall afterward. And uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm referring to that episode. I guess I just something about you makes me very uneasy. It's weird seeing yourself. I get that. Sam just nods and slides the t-shirt into her backpack. At that point, because Chris and Ashley's room are right next to each other, you hear a giant commotion coming from Ashley's room. I guess she will go and investigate. Samantha kind of looks at you as well and just nods and is like, alright, let's uh, let's go check that out, I guess. Yeah. She reaches out and squeezes your shoulder. And she goes, look, I know a- as you guys are walking to Ash's room, she's like, look, I know it's weird. But we just have to trust each other. I'll try. But I make no promises. As that thing said... If I wanted to hurt you guys, I would have done it already. That that doesn't mean anything here. (laughs) That's fair. Alright, you get to Ashley's room. And the place looks like a bomb went off. The bed is flipped, the drawers are dumped. It, It looks not anything like Chris's room. And as you step in, you see all three boys are standing in the middle looking down at a piece of paper. Did I destroy her bedroom? Mm Mm-hmm. As I, you know, gently walked through Chris's bedroom? Mm Mm-hmm. What assholes. (laughs) So let me get them back in here so we can finish this one. Samantha and older Samantha walk into the room and see the room just completely tossed. And all three of the boys are standing in the middle of the room. Ryan is holding a piece of paper and the tooth. And the other two are looking over his shoulder at this piece of paper. What did you three do to her room? 
I mean, we're I not. I didn't do anything. I did it, and we're not in her room. We're in a version of her room. So, like, suck it. You could have at least, you know, been nice about it. I mean, if this was actually her room, I wouldn't have done this in the first place. But, you know. And he points out the window towards the red sky. Fair, I guess. What do you have in your hand? Oh, um, I found a piece of paper that's not in Ashley's handwriting that has, uh, something written on it. Can you not read it? No, I just had to bring up my notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, I finger, horn, tooth, heart. And as I stared at it, it scratched out tooth with a red line. So is it like a reverse list of what we had to get in the real world? I'm not sure, but considering that Negacris called this tooth his, I have a feeling it's connected to that somehow. Hold on. Do you think we have to get those parts off of him? I don't think it's off of him. I found this tooth in the theater in the movie theater yeah but he has both his eyes does he yeah I thought so you guys never did an investigation on that I we would notice is... if he had eyes or not yeah <laughs> that's a that's not gonna fly we'd notice if he was missing an eye wasn't the first description of Chris is in the treehouse of him being like all fucked up What would the what did the list say? Tooth, finger, eye. It said eye, finger, horn, tooth, heart. If I remember correctly, after he snapped Ashley's neck and her body fell backwards, you guys saw how fucked up he looked, and you saw exactly how he died. You saw the claw marks all over his chest. You saw all the damage that was done to him, including the right half of his face gone. So I have a feeling the rest of these parts are going to be spread around wherever here is. Fantastic. And considering we found one of them in a place that we all went to a lot that wasn't like decrepit like everything else I'm assuming if we go to enough of these locations we'll find at least some of these parts you see that older Sam has a very quizzical look on her face like she's really thinking about something Penny for your thoughts older Sam I'm I might know where the horn is what do you mean that seems way too easy. What do you mean? I have a horn at the barn that, or at my house, house, barn, same thing, that, uh, that I didn't have in the real world that's hanging up on a wall. It was here when I got here, and I, I never tried to fuck with it. So you're telling me this entire time we didn't have to come here? Well, I mean, to be fair, we wouldn't have known about the list if we didn't, right? Yeah, but nobody said this place was dangerous. There hasn't been any danger anywhere. Chris's room was basically empty. You had to say that, didn't you, Sam? <laughs> you checked one room, we checked another. It's a whole damn house, a whole damn backyard. Come on, I know you want to go home, but you are not that narrow-minded. We need to go check the deck. Why do we need to check the deck? Because that's where we always hung out here. We didn't always all hang out up here. We didn't all hang out in Chris's room. We're not even checking the place where we actually spend our time. I mean, yeah, he's not wrong. I'm inclined to trust nobody. As much as I don't want to, I, 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 I don't see a reason to distrust him. 
If he said there's danger here, there probably is. If we can walk into it expecting it, that's a better situation. Yeah, but you would think that the danger would have found us somewhere down the hallway. If we're not finding it in the hallway, it's not, how are we supposed to expect it? Well, I mean, like, how long did it take that Inside Out man to attack us in the theater? And that was just because you lit a candle and you saw it. Arthur, Ned's going to grab the wine and start moving towards the back deck. The wine? I think... <laughs> um, yeah, we got wine. We, we didn't in tell Ashley's you. room? Mm-hmm. Um, excuse me, Ned, or not Ned, Ryan would not let that go. You handed it off so that way they could uh, examine it. Fuck, I did do that. Anyways, Arthur, what were you going to say? Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the deck might be our best bet. Okay, let's let's go to the backyard then. Okay. So we made the decision to go to the backyard. Perfect. As you guys are walking through the house, you notice, again, like I said, the house isn't decrepit in any way. It's the normal house that you guys all knew. It is a post- uh, Chris being deployed house. So you see, like, pinned up on the refrigerator, you see letters. You see you know, pictures of him in uniform. All that fun stuff. And you guys get out onto the deck. And you start looking around. And at first, you don't notice anything. Just, this is where you guys all used to hang out. And as you guys are kind of looking around on the deck, like I said, you don't see anything, at least anything that would match this list. But nothing really out of the ordinary. Nothing, but nothing. Okay. So we're just standing on the deck, looking at the bright red sky, going, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's basically kind of like a party deck. Um, it's a bigger back deck. It's got table chairs. It's got, you know, around the railing, it's got places for, like, tiki torches, and the tiki torches are there. Yeah, it's it's just a deck. This is where you guys used to hang out. I'm going to reach over and touch Arthur's arm where the forget-me-not is at. Okay. Arthur, does she feel it? Yeah. Okay. Carrots and hummus. Jeez. (laughs) You know, (laughs) the code doesn't work if you say both sides of the code. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) That is true, God. You see older Samantha kind of chuckle and just go, ah, carrots and hummus. I'm going to kind of start turning everything over. I'm going to start looking on top of, underneath the chairs, the table, everything out there. Okay. Okay. What were you saying, Brick? I was about to say the same thing as him. Okay. So you guys go to work trying to move stuff to see if you can find anything. I mean, you're not really seeing anything. You guys can roll a search if you'd like. Sure. Sure. Maybe I'll pass a roll tonight. 58 on a 40. 54 on a 42. 39 on a 22. (laughs) We don't see shit. (laughs) So you guys are moving stuff, not seeing anything. And Ned. Yes. You you're just kind of fed up at this point of not being able to find anything. And you just lean against the railing. And as you do that, one of the tiki torches that you're next to makes a very, very, very faint, like a snick, like a sound. Hmm. What 
the fuck? Hey, any of y'all hear that? And as you say that, the entire deck falls away from underneath you guys as you enter a free fall. And that's where we're going to end the session. What? No way. Face jumping. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Where's the fuck's sake to... guy when you need him? That guy that that makes me so happy. <laughs> Let's Play Pretend is Nick Barnett as Ned Dollarin, Breck Black as Ryan Winchester, Matt Check as Arthur Gooseberg, Melanie Derringer as Samantha Williams, and me, Jordan Derringer, as your GM, DM, handler, keeper, and host. Keep up with us to hear firsthand on any fun new developments that may be coming in the future. And we will see you all here in two weeks' time. Let's Play Pretend!